Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com and these are the market positions for May the 6th, 2010. Now our first position for tonight is in coffee futures contracts. What we're going to do here tonight, we're going to be looking at a couple of positions, but we're going to really limit our trading this week with all the stuff that's going on with Greece and everything else. We're going to be looking for better percentage trades. Now, the reason we're moving off into the coffee contracts, you remember that uh, I had this for a trade, I think, this week and last week. We've got a good strong uptrend from vantage point here with this triple EMA crossover taking place. We've closed at 137.25. We can see here what we want to take notice here with these candlesticks from vantage point. This is true market data from the day. We can see how the market is hugging the three-day predicted moving average from vantage point. Every time it touches it, it bounces off it and moves higher. It's now hit a peak just above this 138 level, and it's starting to move a little bit lower. So let's have a look at what's happening for tomorrow. We've got our predicted MACD is crossed over. Everything looks good there. We're moving to above the zero line, predicted RSI and overbought territory, but I think we have room to extend there. So let's, let's have a look at the daily report from Vantage Point. We're going to be looking at the predicted low. That's what we're going to be trading off here today. We've clearly identified which way we want to trade this. We trade this. We want to buy it on dips. Now, again, going into the daily report, we're looking for the predicted low of the day from Vantage Point. From there, once we get that slight pullback, <clears throat> excuse me, we can then enter into a buy position. So we have 136.59, 138.76 with the neural index pointing down. Now the fact that the neural index is down is, is nothing to be too concerned with. We're going to use that move lower to set the buy position. Now again, uh, the primary trend here is up. The neural index is a 24-hour ind indicator. Uh, we're only going to give so much, uh, you know, we're only going to pay so much attention to that indicator based on this other move. Now, going into these crossovers, we want to have the neural index is down, so very likely the short-term crossover is also going to be pointing down. Now, well, actually it's not, so that's surprising. <laughs> so we're going to stay with that. We've got everything looks good there, so we don't even have a short-term crossover, which is good. We've got a low tomorrow for the 136.59. We're going to let this thing pull back. When it does, we're then going to get into a buy position. Now, that's our first position for tonight. For our second position, we're going to change gears here somewhat and move off into the foreign exchange market. Now, our second position, we're going to be looking at the U.S.-Japan currency pair. Anybody that was watching the live pre-market open this morning, we're going to be using these dips to buy the U.S.-Japan currency pair. My belief is all of this nonsense in Greece and everything else is going to pass by, and that'll be the end of that. The equities will, will then start moving higher again. Commodities will start moving higher. If, if nothing else, we're going to see at least a corrective move higher in both those equities and commodities. So looking at this, we have 93.64, 94.01, 94.16. We've closed at 93.82. Uh, this is not a bad thing. We want it to pull back a little bit so we can get into the buy position. We're going to be using the 18-day predicted moving average from vantage point tonight at the 93.64. Now looking at the crossovers, we're going to have a quick peek here. We've got the short-term crossover, which is probably going to be pointing down. Uh, we haven't actually crossed over yet, but it's starting to head that way. Now, the medium-term crossover then obviously is not going to be pointing down, so everything looks good. But the gap between the simple moving average and the predicted moving average is starting to narrow, uh, suggesting a, a somewhat contradictory move may be in store for us. Now, with taking that into consideration, we want to look at our other indicators from vantage point. We have the the, the strength indicator and we have the predicted medium term difference. Now the angle of this, that it, the fact that it's pointing down is, <clears throat> whether it's pointing up or whether it's pointing down, is really not uh, of any real interest to us. It's, it is pointing down, but <clears throat> if it was pointing up, then, you know, it, it's irrelevant. The actual angle of the line where it's pointing is not something we're concerned with. Uh, we're, it, we're moving lower, we're slightly below the zero line. However, the predicted MACD has just recently crossed this trigger. We can see that the trigger is above the zero line. That's a key indicator for us. The predicted true strength indicator from vantage point is running neutral. It's running flat, but it is an overbought territory. So uh, even if we had the short and medium term crossing over, our long term crossover is to the upside. Our triple EMA crossover is to the upside. So what we're going to use is any pullback lower on US Japan, we're going to use that as a buying opportunity. 
So now that we've identified that, let's go in and have a look at that daily report and see what, what's happening there. Now, the daily report in this case is definitely going to come into play. We can see we have 93, 39, 94, 67. So for tomorrow, we're going to be looking for an entry point between this 93, 39 and that 18-day predicted moving average at the 93, 65 area. So I would prefer the entry at 93.65 and I would put our stops at about the 92.65. We want to leave ourselves about a 100 pip stop loss here. We've got extreme volatility in the market. So again, we don't want to get knocked out of what potentially could be a very, very good trade. Now, the correlation between the U.S.-Japan currency pair and the equities, uh, before it was a strong dollar, uh, weak equities, uh, weak equities, strong dollar. That's not really the way I see it. Uh, currently, I think we're, we're seeing more of a correlation to the Japanese yen. That's what we want to watch. So if those equities start to recover a bit, then what's going to happen is the U.S.-Japan, even if the dollar weakens against the other currency pairs, U.S.-Japan again is likely to move higher so I see some good opportunity in buying on dips so let the market pull back we're going we're at 6:55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Wednesday so we're getting ready for the Asian session coming up here shortly we're going to use the uh, the market here for any again a push lower to get into those buy positions so those are the market positions for May the 6th 2010 and again my name is Greg Furman market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com